Hi everybody, welcome back to my studio. I think you're going to love this video. It is such a treat. This week I had the privilege of doing a podcast with Janie Santos of Dig, Plant, Water, Repeat, a gardening phenom that I follow and I'll link her below. But she did an interview with me about art and art in the garden and living and working artfully. So I have done this video for her to show her some art in the garden and to show you some art in the garden. So if you haven't followed Janie you're, and you're a gardener, you are going to love her her channel. It is so great. She's a young mom, her husband and she do the garden uh, full time for, with YouTube and it has been such a pleasure. And her podcast, Dig, Plant, Water, Repeat, will have the episode with uh, herself and me. And it was so fun to chat with her. I felt really honored. So I hope that you enjoy this. You get a little bit of a studio tour, but then we talk about art in the garden. Have fun with this and we'll see you in the next video. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe, Janie. I, I'm just too excited. It's fun. On to the video. Hi, Janie. Welcome to my studio and to my garden where I'm going to show you a little bit about living and working artfully and put some art in the garden. But first, I'm going to show you inside my studio. Come on. Welcome into my studio. I haven't had you in before. I've just showed you my gardens. So this is where I work. Here's a painting I just finished. Here's a few fun cows that I'm working on. And here's where I store everything. And best of all, there's where I watch you, Janie, when you're showing me all that you are working on in your garden. So here's a few more paintings that I'm working on. I have a really neat slatted wall system. The paintings can go up and down depending on how I need them to be. Here's some canvases that I'm working on. And I love to thrift and find old things that I'm gonna show you in my garden, but here's a really neat piece that holds all of my merch. But it is so neat, we had it installed. This little studio used to be just a cinder block shed. Let's go out and I'll show you some art in the garden. Like I said, this shed, this used to be a cinder block shed. And during COVID, we renovated it to be this lovely studio. The ivy was on the old shed and I kept it. And I, I am telling you, I have to trim this thing every two weeks just to keep it in check, but it's perfect. But the first art in the garden piece I wanna show you is this big leaf. You'll find that I have three of them in the garden. I found them at a garage sale. So I went to this garage sale, it was great. These three pieces were $150 and I thought, $150 at a garage sale? No way. And then I said, give your help, head a shake, Julia, and buy those pieces. They have been such an asset and such a wonderful thing to add to the garden. Look at the scale. Gardening is about scale and color and layers and foundations of, you know, principles of design. I love this big leaf. So let me show you some other things. I, I'm, I tend to be a little cheap. I love to thrift. So whenever I find things at thrift stores or anything like that, and that I think that I can use them in the garden, I will. This, I just move around whenever there's a hole. I just put it there. So let's find, let's find some other things. Again, I just like to tuck artful things into the garden just to add a little bit of form, a little bit of shape. Look at these coleus and the salvia outside my studio sliding doors. Isn't it something? Art in the garden is kind of a really important thing to me. I love to find old things. So that's just to protect the house. And while we're talking about this, 
and being artful in your home and in your life, let me show you the back side of my house. See all the color? This was an awful peanut beige when we bought this house. And we didn't want to replace all the siding because it was fine, but I couldn't handle it. So we painted it and it has been such a wonderful thing to do. And talking about fines and using them in the garden, we found this, we live at the lake, Lake Ontario, and we found a wonderful log down at the beach that had washed in and we decided to use it as a chandelier. It's a great tip. The cost of this was the lights. And my husband thinks it looks like a dragon. Do you see it? I think I need to put a marble, some sort of big glass ball, burrow it into an eye. I love to have things that my grandkids can just find. I don't always tell them what I do in the garden and they just discover it. This is a lovely renovated canoe that I got for my husband for his birthday, but we also use it as art in the garden. Use your things. All of the little tables, the chairs, everything you see except for uh, the couch. I bought that, but I find them at thrift stores. Oh, little product placement. There's some of my pillows. These are made from the paintings of my florals. There's a little, little cow. <laughs> Sorry about the product placement. This harvest table that seats my family is so wonderful. My husband made it. We found the legs at a thrift store or a reclaim store, something like that. And we sit here during the summer, fall, spring, and it is glorious. And because it's, um, it's, it's tough, it's over 100 years old, this wood, it is great. So this is the scale. If you look at the scale, the scale fits the space. That's all part of it. Let's go find some more art in the garden. This is my favorite part of my garden. I have what I have call a little secret garden. And seriously, guys, it's all about doing with what you have. This raised bed was built with cinder blocks and um, stone that we found somehow they had left it, must have been from a project when we bought the house. So we just used what we had. Eventually, I think I'd like to clad the side or try to get moss to grow on it or something. But, you know, we'll see if, if that project ever gets done. Again, another garage sale find. I found that at a garage sale and uh, I use it as a little potting area. This is where some of my tools sit. My, my hose is here. I think I need to paint that hose thing the same color green. Now, all of this thrifting kind of is made up for the fact that this lovely, lovely planter showed up at my house. I accidentally bought it and that's what I'm telling my husband. And uh, it was actually an accident, but I did not realize until it came to my house. So here's my garden. And there's so many things, so many things that I like to do that I call art in the garden. I love to place things that I found, all of these found at a thrift store. I do want to put some googly eyes in there so my grandkids can find that one day. I found this bird cage at a thrift store the cement candle holders, all the stands, and this table was my find yesterday. It was a deal. I was out, it was my birthday yesterday, and I was out and I went, we went to a store and they had a very discounted um, area and I took advantage of it. There's another leaf. And then as I circle around, you'll be able to see all sorts of little things hanging in the garden and tucked in to my hydrangea bed is a, is a third leaf. There were three in that collection and I got them for 150. I went to a store once and I found the medium sized one in a decor store for over $500. So I was thrilled, I am so glad. This was a find, um, very discounted find. It's wonderful. 
it's not real metal, but it's made to look like it. Doesn't that look fabulous? And again, I take old containers and I just attached this to the wall. There's hardly any soil in here. These things are living fine. Old pieces of wood, turned wood, and I add them to the garden. In this little shady area that I'm still working on, I take whatever I find that I love, that has the aesthetic I love in this scale. I felt these trees made, gave me height before my hydrangeas that I've planted here and my azaleas grow up. My husband hates this gate, but I love this gate. And it's just sitting here, adding some texture, adding some design to the wall. And this is an old piece of rusted metal that I plan on putting it on, on a space in my, on my wall of the house and letting a rose um, travel along it. So here we go. There's another, another little find that's elevating a plant. This was a fire pit box that I turned into a planter. Coming back to the garden in front of my studio are my huge swath of uh, incredible hydrangeas where I have a large, wonderful dragonfly that is always permanently living here. And for this, I traded. I was at a little art show where this gentleman was making these things and he liked my art. So I traded with him. It's also fun to take something and turn it into an art form. So we have, we have to come out and do some uh, crisp trimming on it, but this huge Euonymus was here when we bought this place about six years ago. And then we've thought it'd be fun little spot to make a heart. Again, another, another iron piece with this permanent bird that stays here in my hydrangea hedge. But this is the last thing that I want to show you. And, or this is something that I want to show you. Do you see those uh, stumps there? This large, lovely tree had a mate that needed to come down. So I simply took three of the stumps and made a little collection in there because the form, the shape, art in the garden, my grandkids love to hop around in there. Placing pots in the garden. I've got this area that all the perennials have finished blooming and now it looks a little bland. Let's solve it. Let me show you how I solve it. Okay, I think I did it. What do you think, Janie? Does that add the color that I need in this spot? Janie, thanks for visiting my garden. It's been a pleasure to show you all of the things that you can do in your garden artfully and thriftily. Have a great day.